Vlog 62. I just spent the last four hours trying to upload yesterday's vlog to YouTube and it finally worked. It is like 11.30 and I have done nothing but fight with that computer. What are you doing? What are you doing? So, I have to put it in high gear if we're gonna fish today. All right, I haven't been outside yet today. Hopefully I'm gonna open this door and be welcomed with a a breeze of, fresh, of warm air for today we can steelhead. Moment of truth. Oh, this is gonna be, it's gonna be tough to see if we can fish or not. Man, I am not down with this winter stuff at all. I wish it would just end. Fresh hat today. Everybody check it out, Amber. Let me take one out of the stock. I've never had a, a black on black fear fishing hat. It's hard to see on camera, but it is fresh to death. To the post office, your guys support. Clothing's been selling off the hook. I don't even know if we ordered enough for the spring fishing show now. I'm kind of a little worried. We can't do it without the support from you guys. Thank you so much. Let's cross our fingers and hope we can fish today. That's a funny looking thing. That's a hat. Look. Okay. Wanna give a shout out to anybody? Howdy. Say, say, you got family, friends? Say hi. From where? Wherever you want. Just shout, shout them out. Hello, Toronto. There you go. Out there. It's awesome. Um, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have, Have a great day. day. Chill out here. So that's pretty much all I have to do for the day. I'm like, unless something comes across the old wire, I'm pretty much caught up, which never happens here. So who knows where we'll go from here. Maybe we'll just kick it and watch Joe Rogan all day on YouTube. All right, so my not so busy day turned into one giant email slash phone call day that I can't really talk to you about, but it, it was really good. I may be able to talk to you about it in the future if things come together, but it did take up most of the afternoon. What are we up to now? It is cold outside, but tonight it for sure it's getting down to minus 10 and that is going to freeze the river up. So hand warmers, we're going to check the river. If it's open, we're gonna fish. And if it's not, we're in big trouble. It's gonna be cold on them little toes today. All right, we're here. I got all the way here and about five minutes down the road, I totally forgot the row. So we're going all fly bite. Hopefully they're hitting the fly. Hopefully there's some open water down there. Let's get, grab that GoPro and the rod, get fish. Okay, we just finished up fishing. Get in here, boys. I met these young lads down at uh, the river. They watched the vlog. 
shout outs, first names, and give me your Instagrams. Well, uh, I'm Liam, and uh, go check out my Instagram on uh, Outdoor Survivor Dream. I'm Corby Fisher. My Instagram name is Fishing Ontario Waters. Beauty. You boys keep up the hard work in the river. Let's get some fish. Yeah. Get out there and catch some. I'm not even kidding you guys. It's freezing cold out. That was really cool to, to meet those two young lads. I only got one fish. It is getting colder by the second. Tonight's supposed to go down to minus 10 and they are really not going to bite. But those young lads are down there giving her. I totally remember being those kids down here at the exact place we are. You know, hanging out the river, catching some fish, having a good time. It's absolutely freezing. Good on you two for coming out here in the bitter cold. Shout out to them. Awesome to see young people at the river. So we're here. I was just about to kick it at home on the couch, watch some TV before I answer questions, and I got a phone call saying, Fear Fishing Hats are here. So we pick them up at Brimacle Ski Hill, and then they go to the embroiderer tomorrow, and then to the spring fishing show. Here's the first load of hats for the spring fishing show. They are going to tomorrow to the embroiderers, embroiders. Man, this ski place is pretty cool. I talked to uh, Andrew Mercer, my buddy, who hooks us up with the hats. And I'm gonna try to make him take me skiing. What an epic fail that'll be. Yeah. So take me higher, baby, let's go and hit the streets, yeah. All right, I just got home from the ski resort. Super cool of them to hook us up with hats. Now, you're, some of you might be asking, why do you get your hats from the ski hill? Well, when I first started the apparel company, they were, the, they were nice enough to hook me up with, you know, a solid price. Certainly better than anybody else offered me. I want to keep all the apparel as local as possible so that we keep support local business. We have everything always has been made in and around the Port Hope area or comp local companies bringing in the clothing for me. And we want to continue that for as long as we possibly can. Huge shout out to them. Thank you very much. Now we have some, we had some questions. I thought it was going to be like a, a downer day. I'm like, I didn't get a, a whole lot of vlogging done and all of a sudden it turned busy on me. But we're going to run through these questions as quick as we can. Last time I took like forever to get through the questions. Chris Morgan asks, is it worth it while making the trip to Port Hope during salmon season? Let me tell you the Ganaraska River gets a gigantic run of Chinooks, but with a gigantic run of Chinooks, all comes a gigantic number of anglers Chris so is it worth it if you hit the right day on the Gany and get scheme fishing in the lower end absolutely amazing if you come super early and you can get on like a, a nighttime pier bite with glow-in-the-dark spoons and there's not a lot of people awesome upriver when the the run actually starts or night fishing it's kind of just a gong show and you know if you got salmon where you are probably easier just to catch them uh Lance Ray what's the best length of leader to use I think he's talking about float fishing and I will tell you right now now that most people I see float fishing fish their leaders way too deep. Basically steelhead or predatory fish, their eyes are in front. So this, if you're too deep and it's going underneath them, they don't see it at all. So you want at eye level or above. You're definitely better to go shorter than you are deep. When it's flowing down the river, you want them to be able to see it coming, not down here where they have no opportunity. Short lead. I uh, usually best tip I, I'll give you is when you catch a fish hook your hook here and measure on your rod where your float which guide it goes to that way if you snap your line you can quickly get the proper measurement to catch more fish some days leader length is everything best conditions to throw jig every condition and swim baits for bath I'm not a huge swim bait guy I would say throw a swim bait anytime that you have fish that are on bait fish they're going to be looking especially for smallmouth if you get like suspended fish that's when I would throw a swim bait a swim jig or he says the best time to throw jigs always I was I start with a jig all the time small mouth large mouth you know if they're on any kind of weed line structure I really think the flipping jig is one of the greatest baits ever made that was from Todd sorry Todd I didn't throw that out I I'm, I'm not I'm not seeing last names anymore because I just ruined them Rick post my steelhead videos on here or YouTube unless you have a huge YouTube account more people will see it on Facebook than YouTube but you need to be posting lots of videos on YouTube in order to build your subscription. Post them on both. Ian, that's a, the question. I'm not saying last names anymore. You'll know who you are. Are fish safe to eat in Ontario? I'll be honest, I, I hardly ever eat fish, but yeah, sure they're, they're safe. 
I'm, I will tell you, here's my opinion, and he has a picture of what looks like a big old Chinook. A 10 pound steelhead is probably 10 to 15 years old. That's rough estimates, that's not scientific at all. The salmon in the Great Lakes has a five year life cycle. If you're gonna eat fish, and talking about that, it's way cleaner to eat a Chinook than some big dirty old rainbow. Which is kind of like the misconception. Don't be eating them when they're black and dead in the river either. Chuck Wright, best bass club in Durham. Downtown Bass Anglers Association. They let me go to their meeting. What's my most memorable catch? I'll tell you when I was 12 years old, I got my St. Croix rod that I told you guys about. The first fish I ever caught on it was about an eight pound brown trout and I was super, super, super pumped. It was amazing. Most memorable tournament fish. Marley and I were once fishing Lake Scugog and we went through the row of docks that we usually do really well on and we were kind of like on a Lake Scugog cashing check street. And we got a couple, Marley got a couple and we were kind of having a rough day and I caught a four and a half pounder on a frog over this grass mat. Oh, it was like I was pulling the Ishman roll. I was yelling and screaming. I was so excited. I have millions of memorable fish. They're all memorable. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's vlog. Please, right here, subscribe to the Fear Fishing YouTube channel. Over here, watch yesterday's vlog. It was awesome. Minus 10 tonight. Looks like the steelhead fishing gig is going to be up for till we get some warm weather. I don't know what's happening tomorrow at all, but I'm sure it'll be awesome. See you tomorrow.